of 140 kilometers in a month. Winter didn't used to be a problem before because I was either in a tropical country or gyms were open. But when I lost access to these in the past month, I had to run in the snow at temperatures as low as negative 20 degrees Celsius. So I decided to take a break and just do other workouts during the winter. But last month, gyms finally reopened and if you've run before, you'd know that once you take a break for a while, you're back to square one. I also gained a few pounds over the winter, so I wanted to see how my body would change with running without altering my diet. I just want to put it out there that my primary motive for running is my mental health. There are certain hormones that are responsible for the runner's high and I thrive on it. It makes me feel good and like I can conquer anything. Cardiovascular exercise also reduces the risk of diabetes, stroke, heart disease, fractures, and the list goes on. So, to be a little more objective, I use the in-body scale. It is a bioelectrical impedance analysis device or BIA device that does a comprehensive analysis on body composition. I used it once a week and recorded the values. I know it's impossible to control all the variables unless I eat the same thing every day, sleep the same number of hours a day, or just do the same workouts in general. And even then, I wouldn't be able to control everything. But I did it anyway and made a graph out of the values that I got. Here, the blue line represents my weight in kilograms. The brown line is my percent body fat. And the red line is muscle mass in kilograms. The numbers at the bottom show the distance I ran within that week. I started at 51 kilograms, 31.3% body fat, and only 18.7 kilograms of muscle. At week 1, my body fat decreased by almost 2%, and muscle mass increased by a kilogram despite only running 20 kilometers. Over the other weeks, however, only my weight changed very slightly, probably due to bloating, but body fat and muscle mass stayed relatively the same. I also found an interesting study where they subjected 11 non-athletes to run 3 times a week for 7 weeks. They would sprint for 5, 10, and 15 second intervals, and they measured different variables. And they found that the weight didn't really change much, but muscle mass was 1.1% higher and fat percentage went down. It's a little expected, I guess. But in another observational study that I found was more relevant to my case, 538 novice runners were studied and fat percentage was measured using a BIA device over the course of a year. They divided the participants into those who ran more than 5 kilometers and those who didn't. They also divided them into those who altered their diet for weight loss and those who didn't alter their diet. They found that those who altered their diet and ran more than 5 kilometers lost as much as 5.58 kilograms of fat mass. That's a lot. But in those who regularly ran but didn't alter their diet, they only lost 1 point something kilograms. It's similar to my case because I didn't alter anything in my diet but I ran consistently and lost a little bit of fat mass. This just shows how much of a difference your diet makes when you're trying to lose fat. So what we can take away from this is that it takes more than a month to see significant results in your body. And another thing is how much of a difference your diet makes. Whether you're trying to gain muscle mass or lose fat or lose weight, modifying your diet accordingly would be beneficial. If your goal is to gain muscle mass, weight training would definitely be more efficient. As for me, I'm just going to stick to running because it makes me feel good. And if you've watched until this point, please comment Run Forest Run so I can thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye!